Hey guys, what's up? It's Haku here, and um, I'm going to continue the series of All You Need to Know About Japanese Tattoos. This is going to be part two. Uh, if you want to watch part one, I'll drop the link in the description below. Uh, but yeah, this is a continuation of the series, and today we are going to be talking about Mikiri, also known as the Japanese backgrounds, so the different cutoffs and elements that are used. And yeah, let's just get straight into it, eh? So, firstly, I'm going to talk about Number one is botan giri, which is a cutoff that is normally used at the end of sleeves or legs, even chest plates, uh, stuff like that. And I'll post a picture up here so you can kind of see what it looks like. So it's just kind of the curved edges. Um, the name comes from the flower botan, which is a, actually a peony, uh, like a type of flower. I could post a picture up here too, so you know what it looks like if you don't already. And um, Pretty much the inspiration behind this border comes from the curved edges of the petals. Um, despite the name being Bortan, it has nothing to do with the flower, I guess just the curved edges. Uh, usually the borders end with like the wind bars or a row of clouds or something like this instead. But this is my favorite type of Mikiri and um, pretty much I have my wrists are like that cut off with the Botan Giri and so it's my kind of around my chest here. Um, it's my favourite to do as well. I never do straight cuts on the chest, always Botan, always. It looks way better. Okay, so number two is uh, the Bukiri, which is the straight edge cut off. So this is pretty much how I finish my wrists and ankles. I reckon the combination of this and the Botan looks the best in my opinion. Um, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. But yeah, the straight cut, the Bukiti, um, I really, really like it. It just kind of defines like a straight edge and it's just so perfect. Like when you get that perfect cut off, you cannot beat it, I reckon. But yeah, I'll post a picture of what Bukiti looks like up here, the straight cut. Um, and this is this is pretty much it. So number three is Jari Mikiri. It is... Um, pretty uncommon. I'd say you're not going to see this one very often. I don't see this one used very often either. Um, I'll try find a reference photo for you and post it up above but pretty much this one is a series of like uh, almost just background shading like in wavy kind of patterns almost if you were to use watercolor and like kind of bleed it out um, and then it usually has like a stippling behind it like generally black dots or something that just kind of faded out. It does look really nice um, when you've got a really big piece by itself, like say a back piece, like a big dragon or something like that, and then just the Jardi Makiti behind it, kind of just fading out. The only issue that you have with this is that if you do this background, it's kind of like a standalone piece forever. You can't really add to it. Um, you can't put other background elements behind that once it's already there. So it can kind of be like a, that. that's kind of it. Once you do that, it's like, no, nah, sorry, you can't continue it. So that can kind of be a, a little bit jarring. Um, I think that defeats the whole purpose of Japanese tattoos purely because they are made for continuing really easily, like to extend the uh, backgrounds if need be or wanting to later on in the future. So that can be a little bit jarring and I think that's why it's more uncommon and less popular in the kind of background elements. So with those background borders out of the way, those Mikiri, I'm just going to talk about the kind of layouts that you would typically see in a Japanese back piece or sleeve. So the main motif, the big piece that you generally see in the middle, like the main subject would, is called the Shudai, which is like it could be you know a warrior, a dragon, something like this. Um, that's called the Shudai, so that's top, typically the main um, subject. Uh, the Keshaw body is kind of like um, other elements in the background, not not the clouds and the swells and stuff like that, more uh, uh, like uh, momiji, like maple leaves or um, sakura, like cherry blossoms, stuff like that. So little kind of fillings in between the gaps of the background and the main subject. And then the last one is Gaku body, which is uh, like so the actual patterns such as the wind bars that you'll see or the clouds the swirls the big swirls so that's typically like the um the black and gray elements that you'll see in the whole back piece that make up all the uh background 
So the Nuki body is the skin breaks that you'll see in between the wind and the clouds. Um, this separates the elements really well. It gives it a really, really good contrast. Uh, you would know if you're a good tattooist um, or artist in general that contrast is the most important thing to separate things. Uh, so the thing with the Japanese tattoos is because a lot of the background is just really heavy blacks. They use the skin, they utilize skin really, really well to separate elements such as the clouds and the wind bars and also the background from the main subject. Uh, so if you can use skin really well, this is what makes your piece outstanding, honestly. It separates everything. Uh, the contrast is really good. The other reason is because obviously back in the day, they didn't go ham and use like 500 different gray shades like people do nowadays that you see. Um, so they utilized black and skin really, really well because the contrast between skin and black ink obviously is massive. You know, skin is almost, it really shows. The other reason is that these two things over time, skin and black ink, they change the least. So uh, you think about like a really, really light gray shade that's already diluted when you put it into the skin, um, it's gonna fade even more over time. So if you can utilize the black and the skin really well, the, the, the tattoo ages perfectly. That's why traditional Japanese tattooing is in my, like, you know, it's you can't beat it. The, the simplicity of it as a tattoo and the black and the skin, they age perfectly. So that's why when you get a traditional style tattoo, you can't go wrong. It's gonna age, you're gonna have it forever. It's gonna withstand time. So uh, I think on that note, I think that's a, probably a pretty good closing point for this video. So I hope this gave you a little bit of insights on all the background elements in Japanese tattoos. Um, let me know what you want to see for part three, to be honest. Uh, I, I don't really know what you guys would rather see. If you want to talk about, you know, motifs or something like that, that'd be pretty cool. Um, I wanted to cover all the backgrounds. This one's pretty interesting, I find, and most people don't know much about it. So hopefully this gave you a little bit of an insight on that and you learned something. And if you did learn something today, hit that like button, subscribe please, because it helps me out a lot and it makes me want to continue making these videos pretty much. So on that note, um, if you want to find out more about me, I'll also drop my Instagram handle down below and you can check out my work and stuff. Give that a follow too. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.